Uh, good morning, Central. I've uh, never done this before, but we are doing this live this morning. Uh, I'm really here. We didn't record this um, video beforehand, so I'm sitting in my living room talking to you right now. I just wanted to see how this works. So um, hopefully, I believe I'm going to be able to read your comments, um, and I'll uh, let you know when I get those. So good morning. I wanted to say hi to everybody. Um, want to remind you of a couple of different things. Uh, first is registration for the service uh, that is happening this weekend. Uh, I'm a little behind in sending out my uh, weekly email with the links, but uh, you guys know by now you can always go to cccrockford.org slash register, and that'll show you basically every event that we have available right now to sign up for, including this Sunday. Uh, you can also sign up for the Easter services. Um, I just checked um, the service um, um, at nine o'clock is full. The service at 11 o'clock is almost full. There's just a few spots left. And so 10 o'clock will be where most of you guys need to sign up. Um, that's going to be the service in the auditorium. Uh, we're going to spread people out in that room just like we always do. Uh, and uh, I think it'll be really good. It's going to be a different service. It's going to be a simpler service just because we don't have all the equipment that we can take into um, that service. But it that does don't when I say that, don't hear like it's going to be the the plan B service or the, you know, something that isn't really all that exciting. It's going to be a great service. It's just going to be a little different than normal. Hey, I'm starting to see comments now from Sarah Johnson and Joanne Fort. This is crazy. I can't believe I'm doing this. So anyway, um, make sure you get signed up for uh, Easter. I'm really looking forward to it. And I kind of feel like um, people are a little more willing to uh, go to different events as it seems like we're sort of coming out of the um, COVID-19 crisis, it, you know, obviously pretty slowly, but it is happening. Um, my, I would encourage you to figure out where, is there someone that you need to bring along with you? Um, is there someone in your life that is far from God and needs to be near God? Um, Easter is a great opportunity to invite people. Um, you may find out, you know, if you're already signed up for the nine o'clock service and it's full and you got to move around a little bit, uh, you know, if you need to cancel your nine o'clock service registration so you could fit somebody else in at 10, uh, just give the office a call. It's very easy to do. We could do it. You can do it. It doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, I, I don't want to pass up an opportunity uh, for something like an Easter service. Uh, just because things are different now. Um, everybody that I have spoken to, and I and I'm not even exaggerating, everyone that I have spoken to about, you know, how the room is set up um, for our church services has said that, you know, it's no, they felt very safe. Everything is spread out. Everybody has a mask on. Uh, so don't assume that people around you are just not going to want to be there uh, because of COVID. Um, definitely make... Uh, ask and see what's going on and see if you can get people um, to come with you and hear some really good news about what happened on Easter Sunday. Uh, so I have more comments. One's from Ruth Evans and Tom Brown and Ellen Peterson and all these cool people, some of which I haven't seen in a really long time. Uh, so it's good to talk to you guys and see you. Well, I don't get to see you. You get to see me. So you definitely have the short end of the stick. Um, but the Bible verse that I wanted to share with you guys is actually, it's not necessarily a verse. It's a collection of verses that has just, it kind of has, I want to say it's been weighing on me, but that's not quite the right word. It's just one of those um, thoughts that won't leave your head. Do you know what I mean? And it's the idea of how uh, God forgets our sins. Um, there's a number of different passages in scripture that they don't exactly come out and say, I, God, forget your sins. Uh, it's a little more, uh, the, the, it doesn't come right out and say that, but it definitely indicates that that's what is going on. Um, there's the one, I'm actually going to talk about it in the email that you're going to get later on today. Oh, and speaking of, if uh, you're not getting uh, the church's weekly emails, they come from my address, usually on Thursday or Fridays. The, that's like an email that goes out every week, but uh, there are others all throughout the week as well. If you're not getting those, just let me know. 
and I could look into it. We send out a lot of information. It's it's become a good way for us to keep in contact with uh, church members, let them know you know things we can pray about, um, issues that are going on in the church, coming upcoming events um, as well. So let me know if you don't if you don't get those emails. And hello, April Steichen. Um, so anyway, uh, about God forgetting. Uh, there's a passage in the Old Testament in Isaiah uh, where God is kind of outlining uh, how bad Israel has been, which a lot of those big prophet books in the Old Testament, they talk about that, how Israel has sinned. And um, but then God kind of turns the page a little bit and he says that. Um, well, actually, let me just look it up. I want to make sure I don't misquote it. Um, I had another passage I wanted to read to you, too. I'm getting a little distracted. Um, it's in Isaiah 43, I think. Yeah. Uh, Isaiah 43, 25 says, I, even I, am, he, oh, this is God talking, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. Which I, I'm just baffled by that because it says the God who knows everything is all powerful says that he forgets. Um, well, he's talking to Israel here in this case. He forgets their sins, and he's not going to remember them anymore after that. And I just I just imagine, what is that like for God who knows everything to forget something uh, so that our relationship with him can continue, so that we can move forward as, like, our fellowship can be restored? There's a uh, passage in the book of Acts, chapter 3, that is kind of similar. Uh, this is Peter talking. So this is a New Testament passage. Uh, Peter is talking to a bunch of Israelites in Acts 3.17, and he says this. It's kind of a sermon he's preaching. And it says, Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. They're talking about crucifying uh, Jesus. But this is how God fulfilled what he has foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, then, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. So it, uh, I thought about this. <laughs> I thought this is an illustration that only older people are going to understand. Do you know that there are passages uh, or versions of this passage that uh, say the word blotted out? Do you guys remember? I, I don't remember from experience, but do you remember like when people would write with uh, fountain pens and they have a blotter to absorb ink that they spilled or, you know, little dots and, and things like that? Or the other thing I thought about was whiteout. Um, but then I thought, I was thinking of my daughter, Francesca. I bet she has no idea what a blotter or whiteout is. Uh, so my version of this passage says that uh, your sins will be wiped out. I bet she can probably understand that, which uh, I think is kind of funny. But anyway, um, I just, that that's another kind of indication that God is telling his people when we repent, and turn around and ask God for his forgiveness that he blots out our sin. He, he takes white out and wipes them clean. Uh, he wipes them out. And I think that is something that I could just kind of sit and think about a lot. And I, just be thankful. Uh, if you, uh, I would encourage you guys even to kind of meditate on that passage, uh, or these passages, sort of clear your mind. Uh, sit in a comfy chair sometime today or this weekend and just think over and over and over again about this thought of God forgiving our sins. Um, it's a pretty big deal. Uh, I'd like to pray uh, for us as we get our day started. Uh, Sarah Johnson, thanks for reminding me. We need to pray for uh, Brian Beck. Uh, Brian, uh, the youth minister at Central, is undergoing, uh, I think it's a heart catheter uh, today, um, in, kind of in preparation for a really big surgery that's happening in uh, April sometime. We don't quite know when yet um, to correct an aneurysm. Uh, it's a big deal. It's a big surgery. Um, it's going to have, it's going to be a pretty big recovery uh, after it's all over. Um, and we need to pray for him and his family um, for everything that's going to happen today uh, for the doctors, the surgeons. Um, I, I was talking to him the other day, and I think uh, they're just ready for all of this to be over and to be on the other side of it. So they're they're done waiting, and I can kind of get that. People who have dealt with um, uh, big health concerns like this, uh, 
lot of times it gets to the point where they just want to get over it, get it over with. So I can totally understand. So please keep him in your prayers uh, today and in the coming weeks, and we'll share information um, about what's going on with him um, in the future. So hope you all would uh, pray with me. Uh, we thank you for gathering us together. Uh, I still kind of think it's amazing that I can sit in my dining room and uh, talk to everybody on uh, that's watching today uh, live. It's pretty cool. Uh, Father, thank you for technology and stuff that allows these things to happen. Father, we thank you. We're just humbled by this idea of you forgetting anything. It's just, uh, it's hard to imagine. Uh, Father, we thank you that you are a God who um, is willing to forgive and forget and uh, allow the relationship between us and you to be restored. We thank you for your son that makes that possible, for um, the privilege that it is um, to read about him in, in your word, the things that he taught, the things that he did, uh, the way that he treated people, the places that he went, Father, the sermons and lessons that he taught, all of it. Father, we thank you uh, for that, and I'm going to pray a big prayer that you ask that you would help us to be like him. Um, that we would be obedient to um, the things that he taught, uh, that we would act like him. Um, I know we're not going to do that perfectly today or tomorrow, but Father, we look forward to how you're going to work in us, and your spirit is going to move and allow us to um, be more like him uh, every day. Father, we thank you for um, what the how good it is to be a part of your kingdom. And we ask all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Well, thank you all for joining us. This one was a little long because I've never done this before. Uh, and I'm not honestly sure how to turn it off. So uh, I hope I can figure that out. And you all don't have to watch me all day long. I'm just kidding. I see the great big button. But uh, thanks for joining us. And we will talk to you tomorrow. Have a good day, Central.